All right, here we go. Today we have one of our most controversial guests back for his second interview, Trenches News. Welcome back to Vlad TV. Thank you for having me, Black Vlad. Absolutely, man. You know, you caused quite a ruckus last time you were on here. I know, man. I love it, though. I love it, man. I love it. You Somebody got to be the bad guy, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. I take that role on sometimes. You know, people accuse me of that as well. So, you know, I can relate. Yeah. Well, last time we got your whole story, but you have a whole YouTube channel that covers what's happening in Chicago. So I want to focus on that this time. Yeah. And we have to start with Chief Keefe. Now, Chief Keefe had a big concert in Chicago. Did you go? No, I ain't go, but I seen it. I was proud of him. Yeah. I mean, when's the last time he actually had a show in Chicago? Um, 2011, I think, to uh, Adriana's. That is 13 years. Yep. That is 30. You could start in kindergarten and do a show after you graduate high school. That's how long. That's how long. That's how long. I mean, what was the anticipation? Because you hadn't been there in so long. And look, you got to give it to Chief Keith to really starting the whole, you know, Chicago drill culture. You do. You you got to give it to him, man, whether you like it or not. And actually, the people should congratulate him because he opened the doors for everybody. He opened the doors for the Tukas and uh, everybody who represent them. Like, he opened the doors for everybody. He got everybody paid at the end of the day. And, um, like, when he came, at first I was like, nah, he shouldn't come. You know, people, he got a lot of haters, man. And, you know, somebody will try something. But, you know, I'm glad that it was like, he he got on the stage and performed, no problems, no trouble, no gunshots. Like, I was proud of it. And he grew up. He grew up, man. He grew up big time. Yeah. I mean, and he was also one of the smartest rappers, I feel. Like, when he first blew up in Chicago, he wasn't trying to show people how tough he was and so forth. He got up and he moved to, like, Calabasas, different parts of L.A., and he just kept a relatively low profile. It it Vlad, it it was it's like um he had to leave Chicago to grow. You can grow outside of Chicago with no influence or no gang members or nobody to come and, and, and tamper with your day, you can survive, man, outside of Chicago, man. You can survive. And I think that's what helped them um by by being outside of Chicago, whether they wanna say Keith ran from Chicago, O Block banned them, whatever you wanna say, man. Thank God, Keith, for that. Cause <laughs> Whatever they want to say, man, you still alive. He's still winning, and he the goat of it because he ain't in no trouble. He ain't he ain't got to worry about no no ducking no crimes because he been gone. He been gone doing all the crimes. I agree. I agree. Like I said, he was the smartest one. As soon as he blew up, he got out of everyone's way. And like I've always said, if someone wants to kill you, they're not gonna go to the airport, buy a plane ticket. Get on a plane, land somewhere, look for a gun somewhere, try to find where you are in that new city. That never happens. It's always a crime of opportunity. It's always like, oh, okay, he's he's a couple miles away. Let's jump in the car and go get him. Yep. Yep. We just seen that with another um rapper. Like they they, they, they driving they driving a couple of hours away. But if you are far away, like they ain't they ain't gonna think about it. It's just opportunity, like you said. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about Fulio, of course, who got killed on his 26th birthday. Um, and I'd interviewed him, man. Uh, we had a whole conversation about him squashing his beef and moving on, and he hadn't had kids yet. And, and he said, yeah, you know, we could probably, me and Young and Ace, you know, could probably work it out at one point. Not to say Young and Ace had anything to do with this. And at this point, it's still an unsolved crime. I have no idea who's behind it. But he did have a lot of beef with Young and Ace, which is, you know, common knowledge. A lot of people were dying on both sides. And the fact that he was in Tampa, which is a few hours from Jacksonville, not that long. And he was on Instagram saying, I'm having a birthday party, DM me for the address. He's not checking those names who are DMing him. You know, he's not looking into backgrounds or whatever. He's giving out his address somewhat publicly. And uh, you know, when you heard about Fulio dying, what'd you think? It, it was crazy, man, because... I was sleep on that Jacksonville drill scene. Like, I was sleep on it, man. I didn't know that they had the same thing that Chicago had in 2012 going on down there. So I, I, I was lost on it. But when I caught on to it and I started listening to the songs, I said, man, it's the same thing that's getting these guys killed down here. The dead people 
and all that. I was just so surprised that he got all them enemies, man, and he was willing to go live everywhere he went and tell people, even to promote a birthday party. I think was crazy, man, knowing that, you know, you you still in your home state. I don't know why he didn't go out to, like, a different state and enjoy his birthday party. Like you said, it's only opportunity, man. All right, he three hours away, or we might got some family down here in Tampa Bay. Let's try him. But if he was somewhere else, man, they probably wouldn't even got him, man. But, um, yeah, Fulio, it, it's like everybody try to change before they die. They willing to sit down and talk, duck. Duck was willing to sit down. Before Duck died, he was willing to sit down with the other side. It's like everybody come to their senses. Even Dirk, he, I don't know whether he planned or not, but shout out to Lil Dirk. Lil Dirk said, let's say the kids now. You know, sometimes you wake up and, and feeling different. Well, speaking of Chief Keef, he had a whole concert planned. And a couple hours before the first concert, he posted, to my fans, I'm so sorry to announce this, but due to a medical emergency, I've been ordered to stay home to recover, so I have to postpone the tour. Those who bought tickets can offer a refund or keep for a future date. I intend to be back on the road soon. You know, and then his label posted, pray for Sosa. Now, I remember one of the IG pages that, that had posted this, you know, I had made a, a comment, which ultimately ended up going viral, and I saw it on, like, Reddit and all these other places, and I said, 28 years old and you have health issues? And of course, I'm the bad guy for saying this, but come on, like everyone's thinking this. Yes, you have a health issue. Something may happen for that particular show, but to cancel your, cancel your entire tour, your entire tour at 28? I don't know, man. I mean, what's your take when you heard that? Vlad, that, um... It, it, it was a song. I forgot who it was. I want to say Ludacris. All that smoking going to catch up. All the drinking going to catch up. You know, it's going to catch up to them. Like, they abusing them pills right now. When they in pain when they 60, ain't nothing going to work for them. Nothing's going to work for them. So, yeah, he, uh, all you seen Keith the whole time. I just noticed that Keith belly gone. Like, Keith had a real stomach. His stomach then gone and everything. I say, yeah, he probably do got some health problems. That lean probably, once you off that lean, it's probably a real... Bad situation for you, kidneys and everything. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Fredo Santana was only 27. That's one year younger than how old Chief Keef is now. And that, that was Keef's cousin, right? Yep, Keef's cousin. Man. I love Fredo, man. Long live Fredo. Rest in peace to him. 27, man. I, I'm 51. I'm damn near twice that age. You proud of it, ain't you, Black Black? It's, I'm proud of it, yeah, man. Yeah, see, say people say you old, though. People, the young, will be like, man, this old man. But you, the goal is to live long, not to die. But getting old is a gift. It's a gift. It's not a curse. It's not something to laugh at because most people don't get to this age. They simply do not. Uh, I actually made a list when Fulio got killed. I said, damn, how many people have I interviewed that got killed? So I actually counted. I went through all my interviews. 19 people got killed that I have interviewed. In the last what? Four years? 16 five? years. Yeah, that's crazy. 16 years. That's crazy, though. But, but, here, but here's the thing. I actually made a list with their age. Jimmy Wapo, 21. Doe B, 22. Jay the Young in 24. BTB Savage, 26. FBG Duck, 26. Fulio, 26. Mo 3, 28. Draco the Ruler, 28. Takeoff, 28. Chink Struggs, 31. E Day, 632. Big Glow, who's Chief Keef's uh, cousin from Glow Gang, 33. Slim, 400, 33. Nipsey Hustle, 33. Young Greatness, 34. Snooty Wild, 36. Young Dolph, 36. The Jack of 37, Gonzo, 45. So about half of them are in their 20s. The other half are in their 30s. One of them is 45. That's crazy. They all got shot. They all got shot except for Draco who got stabbed. None of these are old men. None of these people died from being in their 60s and 70s and passing away naturally. These are all young guys who could have lived to twice their age, sometimes three three times their age, easy. And by their own people, man, by their own skin color, man, just wiping each other out. Yep. Uh, by people who look like them in areas where they lived. Yep. Almost all, almost all of them. Almost all of them. Slim, 
Slim 400, they, you know, they just announced that his killer is getting 32 years. Yeah, I seen that. I, I seen that. I, I really think, man, that like people like them, like even the guy, even the guy, I don't know if you, um, I, I know you ain't interviewing him, but I seen him on the um, No Jumper and he was bragging basically. Like he was still talking shit, the Pop Smoke guy. You know, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, man, bro, like these, they don't get it. They shouldn't even let them out, man. They let people out only to, only to not change. He bragging about it. He saying he ain't got no regrets or none of that, you know? But Well, I mean, if you watch the whole interview, because I, I watched that whole interview, right? Because there's always going to be sound bites. They're going to take one little sound bite and they're going to run with it. And what he said was, I don't have any regrets for anything that I've done because you can't live with regret. I did it. I have to stand behind it. But I do have condolences to his family. And, you know, I do wish it never happened. I, I do wish that it did. You know, I never did it and went along with this. And I don't think he was even the shooter. I think he may have been the, the getaway driver. And I think he was maybe 15 or 16 at the time. Yeah. But oh, 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 he was young. He was young. Well, that's why he got out so quickly. Right. I ain't know the because... situation. I just know they killed Pop Smoke. And it was like his killer coming home. Like they've been saying this since he got in jail. Like he he finna be home. And I'm like, damn, like smack to the family, though. But. Yeah, I mean, he's home, but the laws are the laws. If you're if you're under a certain age and you were an accessory. That's just what the guidelines are at the end of the day. Now, when you watch that interview, he definitely de seems like heavily intoxicated. He doesn't seem like he's all there. Um, and, you know, people got on Adam for doing the interview. I, I personally feel like, yo, this is, uh, this is part of history. And this person is part of a historical event. I've interviewed Sammy the Bull. I'm sure that all the 19 people that he was involved in killing, I'm sure their families, you know, hate me right now over it. But because it's not Pop Smoke, it's not a rapper that everyone was listening to somewhat recently, it hits a little bit different. But that's what it is. Sammy the Bull and them, though, man, one thing I could say, they weren't killing no anybody. They, them people who they killed, man, nine out of ten times, they was willing to shoot you in the back of your head, too. So it, it was like, it, it's different than them. Like, I, I respect Sammy to the fullest, bro. Like, even with the Gotti shit, I, I, I just respect him, man. Like, hey, you, you know what I'm talking about? You win, ain't no rules at the end of the day. Like, people think rules, it's time for rules when consequences come. No, it's, it ain't no rules, man. Period. Yeah, once you sign up for a certain type of thing, especially, you know, all the people he killed were all mafia-related. You know, but he did, he did kill his brother-in-law. Damn. His wife's brother, his kid's uncle. You know, that was the one thing he didn't want to talk about. You know, when we did our two interviews, he said, I'll talk about anything, but I'm not talking about that. And I'm like, all right, fair enough. That, that's respectful, that, that man. At home. least do it for your wife, the person you got to go and lay down next to after this. Well, it's his ex-wife. She, she divorced him. Oh. Him. Yeah. Understandable. Well, I think you talked about this also. There was a song that leaked from Chief Keef where he was dissing uh, King Von, Lil Durk, and I think Boss Top? Yeah. Okay. Was that an old song or is it a new song? Or yeah, what? I don't know, man, because they, I, I have, I had, um, reposted it then they they got this owl generated stuff going on i ain't know that you could type in some words and put in keith voice and then it'll rap like keith like i wasn't aware of that but but the things that they were saying it it, it all add up like if you from the streets and you know it, everything that they he said in that rap it all add up they tiny his cousin which is rio which is one of my which is one of my friends who i call a friend you know um they was taunting him, saying they killed his cousin, was insinuating. Vaughn was insinuating he killed his cousin. And, um, yeah, I think Keith had enough of it. I think he just had mm -hmm. enough of it. Like, you know, he ain't said nothing about these guys in a long time, and they just keep on coming for him one way or another. So I think he just made that song. He had it in the cut, and he just dropped it. Okay, was was Chief Keith and King Vaughn, were they at odds at all? Yeah, 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 yeah. Vaughn had um, took some guns from Keith. Oh yeah, Von okay. had took some guns from Keith. Um, yeah, they was they was at odds before they was at odds for a lot of stuff. You know, they was mad at Keith because he didn't bond out Trey Five. But once they robbed, once Boss Top and them took the chain and ran his crib and everything, 
they didn't they didn't try to sell a chain to get Trey Five out either. They had used it for their own gain to, you know, smoke weed or whatever. So it, it was like they took it from Keith for nothing, man, because they ain't planning on getting that man out either. He still was in jail after they took it from Keith. So, yeah. Okay, because it seems like you did a little dirk on that song, too. Yeah, it was it, it was about it was about overdue for him to um this Dirk too. You know, Dirk be sending them sneaky them sneaky shots, man. Then say, Oh, I want to talk about him. I was just thinking out loud. You know, that's what him and Reese, now all of them do that. They say something and then you put it together and they, yeah, yeah, you're lying, you know. But shout out to them guys, man. Shout out to Reese and them, man. I hope they can be leaders and help stop the violence. Okay, and speaking of Dirk, he announced uh, Smirkchella, which is going to be a concert in Chicago to end the violence. Yeah, uh-huh. you see that happening? Yeah, I, I, I could, I could see. I mean, it's a start. It's a, it's, it's a definitely a start, and it'll be cool to see. You know, what I'm talking about young, and you know, even some of some of them grow up, bro. Because like, if you on the stage with Dirk, you're gonna get paid. That's money. He feeding you. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to look past the op and what happened because we can't bring none of them people back who died already. That's what people got to look at. They can't come back. And if they had a chance to come back, I bet you they wouldn't be how they was when they was down here. If God say, hey, you got a chance to go back. They ain't going to know no ops or none of that. So, yeah, I, I think that's cool that Dirk even, you know, I'm about talking about it now. As far as him putting all his guys on the stage and they just rapping about Tuca and all them, that's irrelevant. They, like, they don't even do it. But if you talking about putting Dutchy and Young and somebody from JoJo Real on the stage and all that, man, let's bring it together. I think they'll respect it more, too. They'll know that you serious. Because the FYBJ main call, it sparked, it sparked something on the Internet. It sparked a real conversation, you know? I mean, yeah, it almost kind of reminds me of what, uh, what Kendrick did with the, you know, the pop-out show where you had Crips and Bloods and performing and everyone in L.A. pretty much did it. You know, imagine if Lil Durk threw a concert and Ruga was on stage doing GD Anthem. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and it's all, like, peaceful. You know, it's all love. Like, there's no, there's no violence or whatever else. It's like, because GD Anthem isn't, like, a, an anti-Black Disciple song. It's just, you know. Yeah, he's just saying just they real. got in the dough. They yeah, let us in it. the dough now. Exactly. No, I remember when I interviewed him, you know, I, I'm like, oh, this is my favorite song right now. And he's like, yeah, rap it for me. And I actually rapped the whole song. <laughs> like, yeah, I seen on camera that for I him. seen the clip of it. I'm like, Vlad, yeah. he on it, man. No, nah, I mean, yeah, because he was like, no, I don't believe you. And I'm like, all right, hold on. And I'm actually like, okay. And I kind of messed up a couple of words here and there, but I pretty much, because I thought it was a dope song. And like I said, it wasn't dissing anybody. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rap a song that was like BDK or anything. I wouldn't do that, you know, but that song there, I was like, okay, I'm going to run it on camera. And that's what I'm saying. Like, if Lil Durk could throw a big Chicago show and have Ruga on stage, and Ruga, you're going to hear this because you've done interviews with me a couple times. Imagine that. Have Ruga on stage in that big old auditorium, you know, that big whatever they do, the United Center, and he's doing GD Anthem on a Lil Durk show and just bring it all together. Like, yo, no, there's no love. You know, there's no love lost here. It's all, it's all peaceful. That would be epic. Epic. Well, Lil Reese just got arrested for rape in L.A. I heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he completely denied it. He said, all my sister Riri, the whole story cap, and made up, fuck I look like, the same that I know better, and the same way y'all post that shit, make sure y'all post when the case gets thrown out on my court date. They do anything for clout, trying to come up, try again. Uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, but at the end of the day, celebrities are uh, our targets for this kind of thing. Yes, they are. And um, Lil Reese, man, he should have known better. Like, you can't be dangling. Whether people want to say, oh, man, Reese broke. He ain't got enough money for old girl to do that. Hey, man, look, she's seen the people he around. <laughs> if you know he connected to Lil Dirk, Chief Keith, he on shows with them and everything, that's an opportunity. Somebody going to come with that bag. And then... Like, I got a thing about California, I ain't going to lie. When I went there, it gave me, like, set-up vibes. Like, everybody who works somewhere, some can I'm pretty sure they got a, you know, a, a family member. They be having blue rags on there, the workers, in the hotels and shit. So I could just imagine if somebody, oh, yeah, you got little Reese, pull it on them. And then somebody going to give up a bag like she was coached. Because I seen her friend come through and say that little Reese didn't do it. She just want her phone uh-huh. back. 
Like what type of what type of thing is that, man? To play with somebody's life over because you want your phone back or it got jumped. I mean, yeah, he got released on a hundred thousand dollar bond, and uh, look, I DM'd him, man. I said, "Look, I'm sorry you're going through this, uh, and let me know as soon as the cases drop, so I could announce it and push it." Because the, the problem in these kind of situations is that a man will get run through the ringer with an accusation like this. He'll lose shows, he'll lose features, he'll lose sponsorships, he'll lose money. People stop working with him. He won't get features anymore. And then when it's found out that the woman wasn't telling the truth, she just walks away like nothing happened. Yeah, nobody and nobody l- say nothing to him. He still got to live with, uh, um, did he do it or not? Basically, whether they say he's guilt- not guilty or not, people going, oh, he brought his way out of it. Or, you know, somebody always going to have something to say about it. But I know Lil Reese personally. And I know that Lil Reese, like, he been that dude where he is now since he was young. Like, he always had people following behind him, girls and the dudes. Your favorite gangster used to follow behind Lil Reese when he was in old, when, when they was coming through old block and all that. So, I, it's just, I got a hard time. And I know people do something, you can't put nothing past nobody. But I know people like Lil Reese, bro, he ain't do that, man. Lil Reese don't even talk to people that much. He don't like talking to people he don't know. So, for him to be put in that situation, I just felt a little bad for him, man. Well, yeah, I've interviewed him before, and me and him stay in contact here and there, you know, DM each other, whatever. And here's the thing. I remember Tony Yeo said this in our interview. You know, he he said when he went on his first tour, 50 Cent pulled him aside, and he said, listen, that girl you bring back to your room, that's a stranger. You have a stranger in your room. You go to sleep, that's a stranger that's could do whatever they want to you while you're asleep. You got jewelry, you got money, you got clothes, you got rape charges, you got whatever else. You don't know who this person is. You just met them that day. And I don't know the story behind this, but this sounds like someone he just met. Yeah. Took back to his room. Yep. That's what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like someone he's been dealing with for a while that's now, okay, this happened and I need to go to the police. No, this sounds like someone... He just met while he's out in L.A., and then this type of shit happens. And, I mean, unfortunately, you reach a certain point in your life, you can't keep doing that. You can't keep bringing randoms back to your room. I thought that look, I thought that Reese was an expert on that one, though, because they, they didn't been doing this since they was kids, the shows. Keith and them been doing shows like a lot of people think Keith probably thought Keith was 40 years old. He just young, man. He been doing shows for so long since he was a kid that they forget that. You know, he never had a kid life because he always had the responsibility. Because once you make money, it's a responsibility. Now, everybody attacking you. Baby mamas, everybody trying to see what they can get up out you. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, men are going to be men. You know, and you throw a fat ass and, you know, some smooth skin and, you know, that type of thing. And you, all your logic goes out the window. I mean, That's look, what I'm it is, too, too. Vlad. <laughs> They fall That's for what it, it is. man. That's what they fall yeah. for, too, man. We, we all for it. We, we all fall for it. I've fallen for it. Uh, you know, but at some point, you got to say that whatever is happening today, there might be a, a long-term situation here. So I hope, I don't know the situation, but I hope he pulls through. Because Boosie, right after our interview, I guess he was staying in the same hotel as Reese. So... He had actually like posted a video of him getting arrested. It's like, yo, man, Reese getting arrested. Free little Reese. So, yeah, man, I hope it works out. Hey, it was crazy, man, when I seen Boosie there. And then he was holding his phone like he was a news reporter or something, man. If you know the Reaper, the Green Reaper, I say Boosie crazy in the motherfucker, man. But, yeah, at least he looked out, though. At least Boosie had made everybody aware. Because if nobody wasn't made aware, they probably would have been more charges. So at least somebody seen something. Somebody seen him coming out and how he was looking. You know, that was a good thing. Boosie always catch some shit. Okay, well, two weeks ago, 4th of July weekend in Chicago, 109 people were shot, including a 74-year-old lady. 19 people dead. And this is almost double from last year, because in 2023, 62 people were shot, 11 killed. Are you surprised right now? Yeah, it's out of hand, man. Vlad, it's out of hand. I ain't gonna lie. That's that's um like you can go to war zones across in third world countries and you ain't seeing this type of stuff. And, and then the, like 
you we seeing these videos in real time that's dropping, that's showing the murders. That showing that people is getting this footage and showing the murders. And it, it's crazy, man, that that many people have died. Nobody arrested. No suspects. Like, all, the whole, every situation that happened, man, they ain't got nobody in custody. For all them people getting shot. Like, it's just crazy. Really? It's, get, it's getting out of hand. So no one is getting arrested for this? Nobody is getting arrested, man. Every news report, every news report says the same thing. We have no one in custody. Okay. And because it's 4th of July and the fireworks are going off, this is a perfect cover to basically shoot your gun. That, that's what it is. I done seen it a lot, Vlad, where people come through the blocks, throw some firecrackers or in the gangway, throw an M80, and once it go boom, they, you know, and, and, and running off through the through like a thief in the night. That's what happens every 4th. I don't go outside on the 4th. I don't go outside mm. at all. I stay in the house on the 4th of July. Well, yeah, I remember when I was looking this up, one of the things that was coming up in these searches was there was a photo from last year. It was these triplets from Chicago. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yep. And two of them are dead. Yep, from Murder Town. I know exactly what you're talking about. Identical triplets. And it's like what people are commenting is like the last surviving member saw himself in a casket two times. And still out here doing the same stuff, man. Like when you when you got people like that, you would think like it's a lesson to be learned. But I learned that your friends, well, not your friends, because they wouldn't be your friends if they telling you you got to get back for your brothers. You know, them ain't no them ain't no people you want to be around. They telling you you got to get back. You know, and then you get caught and ain't nobody helping you in jail. Like the streets, it's just all a trick, man. The streets is a trick, a big trick. Do you know who these guys, you know, the two that, that passed and the one that uh, actually survived? Did you actually know any of those guys? Uh, actually, my godmother, my godmother from there, from where they got killed at, from where they from. So, yeah, I, I'm familiar with a lot of them guys. And then I'm from 39th, too. So that's just the other end of my 39th. I'm on Cottage Grove and they on uh, across state. What was the situation over the other two getting killed? Just back, just just to catch somebody back and forth, you know, you can't catch them. You you gonna catch anybody. You know, you 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 wouldn't get anybody. Your brother do something, they can't catch you, they gonna catch anybody to 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 make somebody hurt and cry. Or to bring you out. They call that bring them out, Vlad. When you when you can't find somebody, you hit up his mama, you gotta go to that funeral. You gotta go to somebody, that's what they think. Like you gotta come out and go to that funeral, then they try to finish the job. Yeah, man, I can't even comprehend it because, you know, I know identical twins. I have some of my family and, uh, you know, it, it's hanging out with them. It's like they're the same person. They have the same voice. They look the same. They have all the same features. So you even hear stories about if one of them is depressed, the other one will start to feel funny. And you, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. there's there's a definite bond between twins. But triplets, I've never even met. And to have a set of three identical triplets and have two of them killed violently. And, and the picture was crazy because the one that was surviving, he had like cutouts of his two brothers. Yeah. And, and yeah, man, it's just, it's just heartbreaking. Yeah, it's a never end the cycle, man. Soon when they like, like you lost two brothers. Now I see that you going to go and, and by being from Chicago, it's a lot of peer pressure. Like it's a lot of peer pressure, man. If you don't do nothing, you you a hoe, you all you all these type of things, man. Just cause you ain't never been like that. Your brothers never probably like that, but you ain't like that. So yeah, that's a sad story. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, rest in peace, those two guys, man. And uh, I hope that the remaining dude just moves out and goes somewhere else, cause it, it's not worth it. He doesn't want to be the third one. You told a lot of people that, Vlad. <laughs> I seen you told a lot of people that, man. I'm telling you, you told a lot of people that. You told my friend that, my homie. You know what I'm saying? I'm older than Doug, but that's my homie. That's my friend, whatever you want to call him. You know, I knew him all his life. So when you told him that, and I told him too. I told him this on the jail call. Hey, look, once he made slide and I talked to him, I say, Doug, get up out of there. You can move to anywhere. Indiana, Iowa, you can move anywhere, bro, except Chicago. You will still be alive.
But Duck said he ain't want to move, man, because his friends. He thought they what they was going to think of him. If I move, then they won't respect me. They won't look at me as the, you know what I'm talking about? You know, you always got somebody in the crew that be like, man, he don't do nothing for us anyway. You know, they look down on you, so that's why people stand around, too. Well, speaking of Duck, uh, his uh, posthumous album, From the Heart, is dropping August 4th. Have you heard any of it? Um, no, nah, I ain't heard no songs from him. Like, ever since he been gone, man, it's like the label, whoever he was signed with, like, they don't care about you once you die. It's like they want their money. And that's, a, that's how I look at it. They want their money. They don't care if you got kids or none of that. They want their money, whatever they invested in you. Because this is the first time when I heard that, like, a duck song finna drop or some of that. Mama Duck be on it, though. She ain't letting up. She ain't letting up. Well, yeah, I mean, Mama Duck uh, actually made a post. She said, why is everyone killing each other? I guess y'all want to be dead like your favorite rappers or go to jail with y'all favorite rappers. Either way, everyone loses, especially the moms and dads that's got to bury their child or make sure the book's straight. Please please give y'all a chance. Please please give y'all selves a chance. I told PGF Nook that the same thing. When he came through my inbox woofing at me, I told him. I say, bro, you got an opportunity of a lifetime. Do you know you got more views than the, than all the people, duck, pappies, and all that? You got more views than them. Of one song with Polo G. You supposed to take advantage of that. He said, F me. Hey, man, get your informed. You know, all that. All that. All the, get the police ass on and all that. Look where he at now. <laughs> he up in there. He finna be performing what up in, in the federal penitentiary, man. Well, yeah, because uh, it was just announced that he's charged by the feds for kidnapping, carjacking, and weapon possession. Yep. It was some guys on there trolling him, man. They've been trolling him for like a year, telling him he ain't like that. His cat is rap cap and all that. You don't, you ain't never took nothing from nobody, you know, so he would have to prove something to somebody. That's how I seen it. He had to prove something to somebody, and he went out there robbing people at nighttime, thinking that he won't get caught. But everybody know who PGF Nook is in the city. The whole world know who he is, man. So whether you got on the mask or not, you know, if you talk a certain way, they, is that Trisha News? You know, like I done been places where I done say open my mouth in the shoe store, and me and my wife turn around, they'll be like, I knew that was Trisha's News. They wouldn't be on no harming me nothing, but they'll catch me because of my voice. Yeah, I get the same thing. <laughs> I get the same thing when I start talking in public. Uh, but that doesn't make any sense because, like you said, he's a popular rapper right now. So you're going to prove to some trolls that you're really tough. That's what they do. They try to get Dirk, too. Remember they told Dirk to slide? Why you ain't slide? What do you look like sliding? He a millionaire, man. Like, that's crazy to even suggest that he's going to slide for his brother and he look Dirk. Like, that got to be some crazy work, man. And, like, there's some people on the internet that'll want you to trick yourself out your spot, and then you won't get no money. You ain't going to get nothing from these people. Move up, calling home, telling people they forgot about them, tie money or from old block. He just sent a message to um yesterday that everybody turned this back. The kids got to wake up, man. They, they going in there and telling you that ain't nobody looking out for them. Well, let me tell you what happened just recently. So... A few years ago, you know, I had originally interviewed Polo G when he first started coming out. It was one of his first interviews, and it was probably his first big interview. And I remember uh, he was on Twitter calling me the police and the cops or whatever else. So we were at a bank in our area, and we ran into each other at the bank. So I think he was with his little brother, Trench Baby. So we saw each other. I said, hey, you know, can we, can we go outside and talk real quick? So we went outside, we had a conversation. It was a respectful conversation. We exchanged numbers. You know, he told me his point of view. I, I know my thing was like, if you had a problem with me, you know, I, I, I always showed you love. So if you had a problem with me, why not just reach out to me directly as opposed to publicly trashing me like this? So he's like, no, I get your point. But he made, he made a couple of points about some stuff I do. And I'm like, okay, I get your point also. So when all of this crazy stuff started coming out about him, about his gun charge and his mom is shooting at, you know, her daughter and then his brother gets arrested and so forth. I did an interview on uh, DJ Academic show 
And I talked about, you know, how we ran into each other at the bank. And I'm like, yo, I just don't think that Polo, I think Polo thinks he's above the law right now. And like all this stuff is not going to catch up to him. And he's in a good position. So he hit me and he was like, yo, I want to talk to you. I said, all right, cool. Gave him my number. He FaceTimed me. And he starts getting loud with me over FaceTime. And I'm like, look, you're either going to speak to me respectfully, I'm going to hang up on you. And he continued to get loud, so I hung up on him. So for the next two days, we're basically texting each other back and forth. And his first thing was like, yo, you need to meet up with me. I'm in LA. Where are you at? Let's meet up. And I'm like, are you crazy right now? Do you really think I'm going to meet up with you? It's crazy. You have a gun charge. Your brother was accused of killing somebody. Your mom is shooting at your sister. If I were to meet up with you, I'd have to bring a gun with me. And then what? I have to risk killing you because I might feel my life is, you know, threatened during, you know, you're already bad. Like, how does this make any sense whatsoever? And so we're going back and forth, and, you know, and he was like, oh, you a little girl, you, you know, someone yelling at you, go hang up. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to respect, I respect myself. I'm a grown man. I'm not going to tolerate someone yelling at me. You're going to either speak respectfully to me or we're not going to speak. That's how, that's how it works. I'm literally twice your age. And I'm like, yo, you are going in a direction that I've seen over and over again. Like I said earlier, I'm like, these are the 19 people who died who are all around your age. He's like, man, I don't take no advice from you. You're not an OG. You're not, you don't come from where I come from. You don't know what you're talking about. I said, okay, that's cool. And he's like, yeah, blood, stop texting me. And I'm like, blood? Here's a tweet from 2020 where you're saying GDK on Twitter. So you're a gangster disciple killer here. And now you're a blood now. And you're, you're, you're a rapper. You're a poet. You, you shouldn't want to be any of this. You but your want whole to be family. It. You're right, Vlad. They shouldn't want to be any of it, man. Once you make it to a certain level, man, like, you, 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 you got to be crazy, man. And then, like, you called it, Vlad. You called it. Look at his brother. His brother Robin, cameraman. You using your brother's name to rob people and all that? Like, that's crazy, man. Yeah. Uh, the guy he, he robbed was a guy named Annoying TV. He robbed him and then made him PayPal $50,000. Who does this? Who who shoots at her daughter and then sends out the video to people? Yeah, that, and then the that, video gets that's posted crazy, on the internet. man. That the mama would do that as if the kids like. I thought she. I, I'm like, do she know she can go to jail for that? Like that's right. evidence. That's evidence. And her daughter probably could sue her now. You try to kill her, you know, civil. Yeah, that was crazy, uh, man. All right, and he got his own gun charge, leaving a loaded gun in Manhattan. The maid found it. You know you're not supposed to have a gun in Manhattan. Why you probably Polo don't have G a carry permit in L.A. Yeah. Why does Polo G even have a gun? Like, you Polo G, bro. Polo, it's Polo G. Like, you're known for the Gina and Martin song. People like you for doing that type of music. I don't. They don't look at you as a GDK guy. They don't. You've made a way, and you're a multi-platinum rapper doing fun, happy music that people fuck with. I don't know why you're trying to prove all this type of stuff. Getting into beef with people like me that is really just going to talk about the beef. And he's like, yeah, you better not talk about me again. I'm going to run into each, you know, we're going to run into each other. I'm like, if we run into each other, we run into each other. The last time we ran into each other, I approached you. I'm not worried about running into you. If we run into each other, then so be it. Whatever happens, whatever happens. I'm not trying to be a tough guy. You know, if you want to go and crash out over someone really not even bashing you, right, just speaking about you. about you, that honestly cares about you. Really? I don't want to see this happen to him. I don't want to see him go to prison. But but clearly his whole family is somehow unhinged from reality and thinking that rules don't apply and there's no repercussions to their actions because he's got a bunch of money. That's not always going to work. 
because you know, he was found with a loaded gun. And then last August, he was arrested twice in 24 hours on kidnapping, robbery, and assault. You know, and he talked about relapsing on drugs and liquor a week later. And it, it, it's just like, man, he's in such a lucky position to be in. Lucky. There are so many rappers that are just as good as him or even better that can't drop a song and get a million streams like he can. You see how Doug been working? Reason, Doug been working forever, man. He ain't go, go Polo G went faster than all of them. So, like, yeah. that's a blessing, man. Yeah, he's he's in his twenties. He's got a lot of money. He's got fans. He could tour. He he needs. And what I, what I told him was funny is that I said, because you know, I think his mom used to manage him, and I said you need real management because a real manager wouldn't let you have this type of back and forth right now that you're having with me. You see what I'm saying? Like like I'm a media guy. You're not going to stop me from saying what I'm going to say. Okay, you have your job, I have my job. You're not going to act tough with me over the phone or, or say that we're going to meet up and, and I'm suddenly going to not do my job. I have my job to do, you have your job to do. I'm not going to tell you how to write your raps. You're not going to tell me how to, how to do my videos. And, and the whole thing is just ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous to me. And they'll never win against you, um, Vlad. They drop a song every, every blue moon. You drop a video... Every hour, every two hours, you'll never win against nobody who's doing this shit, man. I be trying to tell them though, but they don't be believe me. The rappers, like you're not gonna win against us because we dropping videos like this. We gonna keep on coming, so you'll never win against us. Right, and a media person's career will almost always outlast a rapper's career. It's a lot easier to drop a hot video than a hot song. Yeah, a hot a hot interview, a hot piece of content than a hot song. Because you could you could have a fan base, you could get Lil Baby on the song, you can get Tay Keith to do the beat, and the song could flop. You have no guarantee that it's going to do well. There's lots of artists who drop albums now that nobody listens to. So don't trick yourself out of your own position because you're in a great position right now. I'm not saying this to try to bash him. I'm saying this that hopefully he'll watch this and say, yo, I was tripping. You know, maybe he was high when he was doing this. I don't know, but maybe he'll say, you know something, I was tripping. Vlad's not a threat to me. But, you know, and me trying to somehow meet up with someone. It, the meet up thing, really, he's like, yeah, you know, let's meet up. <laughs> meet up? Like, I'll go get out of my house like, and go meet up with you somewhere, not knowing who's around? Like, yo, this is, this is really the silliest thing anyone's ever said to me. Yeah, but, it's, it's crazy, Vlad, because your own friends won't give you no advice like you gave him. But they mad at you. Mm -hmm. But your friends won't even tell you this because they don't they don't want to tell the money that he about to crash out because they want money. If they tell you that he about to crash out, guess what? They money get cut off. Your money ain't mm -hmm. getting cut off because you telling him he about to crash out. But his friends will. So that's why they the friends don't tell the, the rappers and the bigger people over them that they about to crash out. Because if they tell them that, they're going to think that the money gone. He going to send me mm -hmm. back to Chicago. You know what I'm saying? When really you trying to help, man. So... Yeah, that's crazy, man. Well, yeah. I hope Paul OG get that, to yeah. get that together. Well, that's all. I said, let me give you some OG advice. Like, where you're going, I've seen this over and over again. He said, I would never take your advice. You, have, you don't come where I come from. You, that's just plain old advice, and I don't need to take it. And I said, it doesn't matter to me whether you take it or not. I have nothing to gain nor lose. Okay? But I have been on this earth twice as long as you have. And like I said, all those people who I tried to change, that I try to get them to calm down, who are now gone, I hope that it doesn't happen to you. But you thinking it'll never happen to you is how it's going to happen to you. So take it as you will. Like I said, you can't cut me off. You can't send me back home. You know, you can't affect my money. I'm good. We both have money, you know, in this conversation. I'm not tripping off you like that. You know, and I even said, I said, okay, you want to meet me face to face? Let's do an interview. Come to my studio. Bring whoever you want. Say whatever you want. I'll run the whole thing. Oh, you just trying to get an interview. Nah, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to get an interview. You know, if you, but if you, if you serious about getting, a, getting your point across and want to see me face to face, come to my studio and do it. Yeah, I think Paul O.G. should give you an interview, man. I think you, because if he look at it, if he look at everything that just happened in the last, 
I'm going to say nine months. You was right, man. Your brother crashed out. Your mama damn near crashing out. Your sister fighting your mama. Like, and then it's in public. Like, we ain't supposed to know none of this shit. But they putting it mm -hmm. out they sales to show. Her mama put a video out of you shooting at your kids, bro. Like, that's embarrassing as hell, bro. I guess if you brought them in the real, you could take them out. My mama used to tell me that. But I ain't never think that she was talking about taking me out, literally. You know, I thought she was talking about just whooping me or something, disciplining me. But they really, she tried to take her kids out. Oh, yeah. From what I understand, the mom said that was ring video from her own house. She took her own video and texted it to somebody, I think to the to the daughter's dad or something. And then and then I'm not sure about that, but she sent it to someone close to her. That video started to circulate and then it got posted. I would never send a video out like that out. Ever, ever, ever. If I had a video of me shooting at someone, unless the police came to my house and seized the video and he came out and I had no control over it, sure. But I would never send that video out. And I was just like, I'm looking at this going like, y'all ain't really seasoned criminals like this. Like, you're not good at this. In today's world where everything, one copy of a video suddenly a billion people are watching it. Like cameras are everywhere. You could get caught for anything. You're, you're... who robs someone and has them PayPal the money? Yeah, that's crazy. Who does man. this? That, that's who crazy. does this? Who robs somebody? You know, and I talked to the dude. I talked to, to you know, annoying TV. You know, he didn't want to do an interview, and he was like, "Listen, uh, you know, I told him the story, and he was like, "Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what happened, but." I don't really want to jump back in that arena. You know, everything. He basically got all stuff back. He got his stuff back, his money back. He, he good. So he, he doesn't want to keep going with it. But he also didn't deny that it happened. So, like I said, if I were to rob you, the last thing I would do is have you PayPal the money to me. Yeah, yeah. That, that I mean, now you got evidence of extortion and some more shit. Yeah. And then here in California, man, I don't know what he thought he was going to. You would have, hey, look, I ain't going to lie. The way Cook County and Chicago going, he would have been better off doing that in Chicago, what he did out there, because they finna lose him. What, you going to be famous in jail, Polo G, little brother? <laughs> they ain't going to, there nobody can in jail that you Polo G, little brother. They want some of Polo money for, 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 for not harming you now. That's all you done did, made your brother pay a bag in jail for not you not to get touched. Because ain't no biddies in California, is it? Uh, not really, not like that. Right, in jail, like, I don't, I don't think they politics, I think they politics are way a lot different. You can't even say certain words in California, that's why I don't go there. You, I, I hmm. might say, what's up, blood, and then get killed, because I'm, I'm saying my family blood, you know? Like, what's up, blood, that's what I call my family in Chicago. You know, I, or somebody, some kids, say, what's up, blood, what you doing? You can't say that in California. I mean, yeah, when Polo, when we were going back and forth and he was like, yeah, stop texting me, blood. I'm like, blood? Uh huh? Yeah. Uh, 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 that just caught me off guard. And plus, like him, why would you tweet GDK when you're Polo G? Why, why take on a problem like that? Why say you're a gangster disciple killer when there's a lot of gangster disciples? And it's rural, a lot of them. A lot In the of world. Them. In most of the states, even overseas. Yeah, worldwide. Why would you say that? When you're already a multi-platinum rapper. Makes no sense, man. Polo, I don't understand I got no... me the Vlad. They be millionaires, man. That didn't come from the streets. Multi-millionaires. Didn't come from the streets at all. A lot of a lot of rapper singers, I be saying them saying on Blood, on Crip, and I'm like... Bro, like, I, we watched you grow up on that over the, like, we watched your whole career go off. And now you talking about blood and, like, nah, man. The goal is to get out the hood. <laughs> not 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 stay in the hood, man. Or the goal is to get away, to level up, not to come back down, man. Look, Polo, you ever want to get on the phone with me? You have my number. You can call me up. We could have a respectful conversation at any point. You want to talk to me, tell me all your grievances. I will gladly listen. I'll address it. If I was wrong, I'll apologize. We are not meeting up in person. On any circumstance, unless it's in my studio. Okay? And if we run into each other, then we'll run into each other. And whatever happens at that point, happens at that point. I, I don't, I'm not living in fear 
and try to avoid people or try to avoid certain places. If we run into each other, we run into each other. Hopefully, we'll have the same type of conversation we had last time. I think Polo, I think Polo G see what you're saying, Vlad. I ain't going to lie. All these videos that just dropped, his brother, his mama, his sister, like, you got to yeah. get management, bro. You got to get real management. You never mix family up and no business. I don't care what it is, man. I'm on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody in my family share none of that. Like, no, nah, I wouldn't do that. I'll just give you money. I'd rather just give it to you than we have a problem about some money or falling out about business. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, Von Off 1700 is uh, what I feel one of the biggest up and coming Chicago rappers right now. Talking about Arthur. Arthur, huh? <laughs> like the cartoon? Yeah, Arthur. That's straight Arthur, man. Straight nerd turned killer, man. They, I told you, man. Some there's some serial killers out here, man. You gotta watch. You can't. You don't know how they coming, man. He does kind of look like Arthur, but you know, I mean, not an insulting kind of way, but actually, you know, with the glasses and everything, you know, he does kind of look like Arthur a little bit. But but that sort of become his thing, I guess, because he kind of looks that way. But his lyrics are totally kind of different, and um. I mean, people are comparing him to King Vod. No way. No way. What? Comparing what? The, just the V-O-N? The, the Vod? Because that's the only similarities, uh, man. Like, the Vod and the V-O-N in his name. Like, other, other than that, like, nah, man. Like, I ain't going to lie. Fast the music, Vod did it faster than anybody. He did it fast. He came up faster than anybody. Fast the music. And then on the street level, not to brag, man. But this dude, dude was a, a problem, Vlad. Like, I don't got no problem with saying that, man. Like, dude was a real problem. Even Lil Durk just came out, and he had a rap. And said, uh, I, don't, I don't know, like, what he, what he said, like, on point, but I know I heard him say, like, I turned a rap into a serial killer. Or, you know, I mean, I, I had a serial killer. I turned a serial killer into a rapper, you know? Like, it's real, bro. You can't, you can't hide it, man, what he done did. And I talk about it to educate the people. You know, so we won't go through it again. They say you're supposed to talk about history, so it won't repeat again. So that's why I talk about Vine and the trauma that he caused the community. You know, he caused a lot of hurt on 63rd, man. A lot of hurt. Well, uh, Traplo Ross, he made a, a YouTube documentary, uh, Vaughn Off 1700, Real Killer or Fake Gangster. Shout out Trap Lord, man. Trap Lord don't be too far off, man. He don't be too far off. They hate Trap Lord, <laughs> but Trap Lord be... He be on that money, man. They be trying to deny. Oh, he lying about this. He lying. He might be off a little bit, but that that's take that to the people who he ain't trying to get you no extra body. You know what I'm saying? Don't say, oh, he he lied about this one and this one. No, he just trying not trying to get y'all locked up for this shit. You know what I'm saying? But Trap Lord be on point, man. He be on point on some real shit. He be on point with a lot of shit. Well, yeah, I interviewed him. And I remember he said that at one point while doing the, the King Von documentary, he read every single tweet King Von had ever done. Every single one. And he basically started to tie in tweets to murders where so-and-so would get killed and then Von would tweet like 20 minutes later with sort of a cryptic kind of message that kind of allured to what just happened and you know whether he got it right whether he got it wrong we'll never really know because now king von is dead but you know traplo ross really puts in a lot of work you know I, the interview that i did did, did some numbers yeah traplo would be on point it's just that people from chicago they ain't grew up yet so he's he the police to them and everything but you got to think about it if y'all say he all the way in uk or wherever he at how the hell he know all this because y'all telling them Y'all telling him everything. He just filling in the blanks at, the, at, at some point. Y'all done told him the whole story. All he got to do is fill in the little mistakes and all that, and he got it on point. Vaughn bragged about this. He Everything he said, he mean it, man. That's how Vaughn was, man. He one of the rarest people that I know that was a killer and was willing to tell the world that I did it. What you going to do about it? You know, he was one of the rare ones that that to do it. So everybody taking the blueprint from him now and a men to murders like the little Jeff, the bloodhound guy. I got 10 hats. You know, they 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 all go out the vine. You know, they all try to cop mimic vine. Well, I interviewed Trapalo Ross. We talked a lot about Vaughn. 
you know, he said that that Vaughn was trying to kill FPG Duck for years, and that was the trophy. Did you say that's true? Yeah, he been out there. Him. He, he been out there. Him. It ain't just started on Oak Street. He been one of them. You know, when he when he looking in videos and these guys looking in the videos, they looking for background, Vlad. Right? They ain't on there talking to you just to have no conversation with you. They waiting on you to show a yellow brick on the red building so they can know exactly where to pull up at. I'm telling you, that's all they do. That's why I don't go live or none of that because I know people are watching backgrounds. When I do my videos, I drop the same video. I use the same video. And people be like, oh, man, you using the same? Hey, look, don't worry about why I'm using the video. You, that means you worry about where I live at, what, what I got on, and all that. It's a message. Forget about the mask. It's the message. That's what I tell them, man, people, because I know people be nosy. They be trying to look at your background and find out your whereabouts. Well, uh, you said that uh, OTFD thing paid 5000 for FBG Duck's location? Oh, uh, yeah. The, the guy sent it to his baby mama. Teasy. He sent it to his baby mama. The cash app, he sent it that he, um, that he killed Duck, that he got him killed, that he sent it all to him. And he stayed out there after that, Vlad. He stayed on the scene. That's why his Duck was on the ground, man. We watching Duck fight for his life. He was in the crowd. Him and the other guy was in the crowd watching Duck fight for his life, man. They deserve to go down. I'm glad they going down. Anybody else want to step up next and replace him, you going down too. On some real shit. That's how I feel, Vlad. Like, it got to stop, man. Everybody say they tired of the killing and violence, then say something. We all know who doing this shit. You hear me? We all know who participating and doing it and terrorizing the community. Well, speaking of FBG Duck, uh, you said the old Block 6 could come home through Rule 35. Yeah, Rule 35. I mean, that's the only way they'll be able to come home early. You know, they got to tell everything. I done seen it, Vlad. When I was when I when I first came on King Drive, I was on King Drive for like two years. I was a kid. I was young in my teens, and um, the Calumet building went down, and all them guys got forty years, fifty years. Man, they was out two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. Everybody was home. You hear me? Like, hey, hey, ain't nobody. There, it ain't never been no rules, man. It's only it, they it only apply to certain people, and they only say something to like the bigger person. I'm in the media, so everybody want to say something to me. But they probably sit next to a person on the couch with them that, that did the same shit I did. And, you know, they ain't going to say nothing to them because that's their friends. But I'm going to stand on whatever I stay, uh, whatever I did. I'm going to stand all 10 on. And you can say what you want to on the Internet, but you ain't going to approach me about it. When you see me, if you're going to do something to me about it, if not, then I'll just keep it moving. For real. Because I, cause I, I'm going to stand my ground and then tell the feds that, hey, look, <laughs> He said he was some kid in the move up now, and they tried to harm me. I'm going to stand there and call. I'm not running. I'm not running from no crime scene. I'm standing there, and, you know, I'm a citizen. I pay too much in taxes. Well, Rule 35 is when you assist the government after you've been convicted, and the information you provide is judged on a point system. So what you're saying is, because they have been, well, they've been convicted, but they haven't been sentenced. But from what I understand, these are all mandatory life sentences. Yeah. So, it's, so essentially, now that they've been convicted, they could cooperate and then turn that life sentence into, what, 20 years, 15 years, that type of thing? Yeah, depending on what they tell, 30 years, depending on what they tell and who they want. Like, if you give up a big fish and a lot of murders, like, it's been people, like, in the Black Disciple organization. They didn't kill people, three, more, three four murders, kilos of cocaine, they out right now. They out. They got locked up in 2004, 2005. They out right now. They in Miami enjoying their life on the jet ski right now. So I, I, I know it's there. I know for sure it's, it's possible. No matter what nobody say, oh, they can't come home. Shit, you going to look up and they going to be right back home. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, one of my regular guests, Terrence Gangster Williams, who's Birdman's brother, he admitted to 40 murders. Yeah, that's crazy. I seen him, man. I respect Gangster Williams, though. He speak the truth. And I, I just want to say okay. this. I watched him last night. I don't know if it was Joe platform or whoever platform. Hey, look, you can say whatever you want to about Trench's news. If you say you hate me, just leave me alone. That's what he said. All right, I told whatever, just leave me alone. If you really hate me, just leave me alone because I'm going to keep thriving. You know, I respect Gangsta Williams for that, bro. I respect him. Well, yeah, I mean, because he cooperated on his three dead friends and also the murders that he did. So he basically closed 40 cold case murders 
and he was able to come home. And, you know, he admitted to it. But, yeah, the fact that you could kill 40 people and come home. And, look, there was, what, one shooter in the Oblock 6 case or multiple shooters? Uh, it was multiple shooters, but, like, Low Saint shoot, Kenny Mack didn't shoot. Um, it was, like, I think it was, like, two or three of them that didn't shoot. Well, it, it, was, it was four shooters and two people didn't shoot. Something like that. Right. So there you go. The two guys that didn't shoot could probably get a pretty good deal if they offer some significant cooperation. And these are all young guys, man. These are guys like in their 20s, early 30s. Yeah. See, you, see you thing, really 19, do? 20. Yeah. See thing, only 20, 21. Threw away his whole life, man. And then to know that he didn't get a chain or nothing... Like, that's crazy, man. That That's crazy to know that everybody got a chain, like, like um, except him and Kenny Mac. Kenny Mac didn't want a chain, but C-Thing didn't get anything. He didn't get no money. He didn't get nothing. He was even on house arrest for a stolen car, and they wouldn't even bond him out. Well, you said that uh, Muwap from O Block will be home after he snitches on Lil Dirk? Yeah, I mean, that's the only way he going to get home. You know, he always comments, somebody in his family always dropped something like, move off and be home. Don't, uh, he said everybody left him. So I, I report about every, when, he, when they drop, when I see his family them or anybody, I report about it. And it's like, you praying on, you wishing on the stop, man. Everybody in jail wish they can come home, man. They going to tell themselves, I got this beat. But really, you don't. Like, y'all, they lost before trial. They knew they was down there. Like, y'all lost, that they dug down, y'all lost. The police followed them all the way back to Old Block, Vlad. They followed them all the way back to Old Block for miles, right behind Kenny Mac them car. They even recorded them jumping out and running from them. You know, they was caught already, man. Like, they were, they were definitely caught already. Well, Lil Dirk actually uh, posted some, some new music where he talked about Muwap. He said, say my name and Muwap trial. I'm going to let y'all know y'all fool for that. Yeah. That, that's it. That's that's real. And um, a lot of people be like, oh, man, Dirk, Dirk left him and helped him. Man, Dirk would have gave up a dollar, man. He would be in that motherfucker with him right now. <laughs> if he would have gave up a dollar, man, I think he would be up in that with him. That's why I think Dirk ain't trying to send nothing or even trying to mention them. But, yeah, they brought up Dirk's name, the lawyers. They lawyers did. They lawyers asked the FBI, did they was they investigating OTF? I ain't never heard no shit like that, whether that, that the lawyer for... Them asked that to the feds. Are y'all investigating OTF? Like, that was crazy. When I seen that, I'm like, they up there trying to grill me. But y'all asking, y'all trying to throw somebody else under the bus. You hear me? Like, they up there grilling me. You did this. You did that. Did you do this shooting? But then they asked, oh, did, did, uh, were y'all, uh, are y'all investigating OTF? I'm like, shit, they trying to not only grill me, but grill about dirt, you know? Well, yeah, you made a video about this. You said that uh, Buwap's lawyer actually quit the Fed case after he couldn't pay him anymore. Yeah, he quit. Yup, he quit. He off the case. Buwap got to get a new lawyer. They actually set it back to February. So it was in August. So that let me know, like, they they, 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 they trying to make us some deals, man. They ain't going to keep on pushing your court date back to six months and six months, bro. You gotta be up in there. You gotta be up in there doing some talking, man, for them to keep on pushing it back. Cause they they be ready to get rid of you. They be ready to put you on the plane, man, and get up out of there. Hmm. So you think that Muwap is gonna cooperate? I mean, I don't know if he will, but somebody gonna cooperate though. I know this for a fact. Somebody, like whether it's down the line, somebody finna tell it all, man, to get out. And they ain't gonna care what nobody think about them. For real, because ain't nobody sending them no money. They ain't had no lawyers. Like, out of the whole old block, you telling me all the Mary Jeans, all that stuff, can nobody patch up no money for no lawyers? The watches, the chains. If you my homie, you were going to willing to sell everything for me. If you my real friend, to try to get me out knowing that I'm fighting for my life. You know, that's why I say ain't nobody no real friends. So you're saying the entire old block six all had public defenders? I said move up. Huh. A self move up. Everybody had public defenders except self move up, man. And then the public defenders was even hanging them even worse. Like they ain't had no, you know how you say, 
my client wasn't there. They couldn't say that. Like, they never brought up that. Like, my client ain't there. This way he was. Woo -woo. Like, they were just sitting there, man, waiting to get. I would have copped out. I would have took the 50 and cooperated if I was them on that thing. Just admitted to it. Hey, if I admit to Doug 35 years, you got to do some type of time, man. You ain't just going to get out of it. But I wouldn't have took it to trial, man, knowing that I was up against the lawyers throwing us up under the bus. They mentioned it, Lil Dirt. Like, soon when they mentioned Lil Dirt, they supposed to, hey, look, <laughs> whose side is he on? You know? Like, but they ain't do none of that, man. I, hey, I'm going to send them a postcard, though, Vlad. I'm going to send them all a postcard. You're going to send them a postcard. Every year. You're sending them a postcard. Every year. Every year. Whatever year they get, you got 99 more to go. You can do it. You, <laughs> you remember Water Boy? That's what I'm going to put on there. The Water Boy. You can do it. You got 99 more to go. 98. I'm counting down with them. Yeah. Yeah, man, look, if I got life in prison and I wasn't even the shooter and I wasn't really involved in it, a couple of years in, yeah, I I, I don't know, man. Like, cause, you know, I mean, I, it, it's funny because when I talk to law enforcement, they say that most of these guys eventually do cooperate. Just, yeah, they act tough in the beginning and so forth, but eventually there's something that comes on the table and so forth where they could get out early. Sometimes the laws change. If they cooperate, they could use this and so forth. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if if some, if not all of them, do eventually cooperate because they're all going to get life sentences. Yeah, and one guy fighting three murders. One guy on that case, he fighting two more murders from some from some other, some whole other shit. So. You know, he ain't, he ain't, he going to be the last one to fold because he, he already threw. But, yeah, for old block like Lowe's and, you know, see thing now, like once they realize that, man, we ain't going nowhere, I'm telling you, they going to use that Rule 35. I done seen the killers, top killers in the VD organization. They home right now, Vlad. They home. They home, and ain't nobody calling them no tricks or rats or none of that. You hear me? Because they kill us at the end of the day. They, they going to step on you. You know, they just look at it like, man, I put in all this work and ain't nobody did nothing for me. That's how they killers end up thinking about it in the end. I'm the one who killed everybody. That's how Gangsta Williams thinking. I'm the one who killed everybody. Shit, who, else, who I'm really telling on? If all my people dead, not killed everybody. But the people who ain't never did nothing, them be the first ones to call you a snitch. Ain't never did shit in life, or you a rat. Right. You ain't never oh, yeah. did I shit to get a... to be put in a position. Listen, I get called a snitch and a rat every day on the internet. And who did I snitch on? Yeah, Seriously, I who did, who did I snitch on? I, I've never been involved in any criminal activity. I didn't snitch on anybody. But I'm still called a snitch. I get rat emojis. But I, I, that's how the internet works. Whoever's doing that is probably working a nine to five job. You know, let's go get a write up unless they get off social media. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. Um, you know, it's actually funny. Speaking of O Block, did you see the picture of the white dude posted next to the King Von Mural? Oh, yeah. And the, the caption is, he said, visit the King Von Mural today. The locals only demanded $200 to take the picture. Well worth it and lovely people. Thanks, fellas. <laughs> hey, I, I was I was, I was, was telling them this since I got on YouTube that they need to profit off that and study letting people get harmed and hurt. Hey, look, bro, we finna show them what Keith lived at, Von lived. T. Roy and them live, we gonna give them the history tour. For that $200, I would have made dude so safe that he would have went and told everybody that, man, I walked in old block, I met everybody, and didn't have a problem. Now other people coming back with 200 Now y'all can figure out a way to divvy it up, but, you know, I would have been profiting off that. They be worried about trenches news. Oh, man, all you do is profit off us. Hey, y'all didn't want to profit. Y'all wanted to sit down here and talk about how many bodies y'all got. I'm gonna eat. I'm going to eat. I don't care what they say, Vlad, about me. I'm going to eat. You ain't appreciate life. I'm going to eat off it. That's all to it. Well, uh, last year, a uh, a nonprofit actually demolished a, a hotel across the street from O'Block. Yeah. And actually uh, built, uh, I guess, a, some sort of community center or something like that. Uh now, weren't they talking about actually demolishing 
the actual projects of Old Block at one point? They was, but you really can't demolish it because the University of Chicago owned it. So if anything, they ain't, if they demolish it, they're going to make dorms. I mean, it makes sense to make college dorms because it's right off the train. The University of Chicago hmm. right there. I think they should take okay. Oak Block, though. I think ain't no repaying it. It's too many deaths over there. We They just need to, you know, let, let it heal up. Let the community heal, man. Send them people out of town. Get them out of town vouchers so they can leave, man. Hmm. Like, it it got to heal some way. We can't keep the same people doing the same shit and, and expecting different results, man. Like, everybody complaining about the killings, Vlad, but ain't nobody going to say nothing. They want to say something. They want to say something. That's why I kick in. You want to you wanna give me a tip? Leave Trench News a tip on my page. I'm going to say something about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say something about it if they don't. Well, uh, Oblock's T. Slick, he got shot and killed recently. Yeah, I don't You uh, made a video about that. Did you know him? Yeah. I knew Lil Thomas, man, since I came up to, on 63rd, I knew him. What was the story behind that? Um, he got he got back to it. Um, being in Peoria, people think Peoria is sweet. Like, they be thinking it's sweet and all that, but it ain't sweet at all. It ain't as many murders as Chicago, but when murders happen, it happen. And um, it was just a case that Slick didn't know how his name was big. He ain't know that being around Keith Nam and Dirk Nam and No Limit Nam was a like a real high risk. So he was just out there dangling out there and didn't even know his like how big he was. I'm mad at Slick. Cause Doo Wop tried to tell him. Capo brother tried to tell him. I seen a post. Shout out to Capo brother. Rest in peace to Cap too. Um, he tried to warn him, man, like you bigger than what you is on the text message. And all he got was some slick as I know. You know, Chicago be bold, man. They bold about it. Because you come from Chicago, you the toughest Al Capone gangster ever. And it don't even be that case, man. So, yeah, Slick, man, he just he he just underestimated what he was. I'm sorry for your loss, man. Uh, I mean, no one's tougher than a bullet. That's the reality of it. And the most pussy dude who you think is never going to do anything... Will, out of fear, pull out a gun and kill you. Your reputation is not going to stop a bullet. And they doing it for the name, too. Not for no money or nothing. Blah. Just to say they did it, Vlad. Just to say that they did it, man. That's what's crazy. They'll get on the internet just to say they did it. Well, today is uh, July 18, 2024. It actually marks the seven-year anniversary of FBG Bricks murder. Now, you said that arrests are going to be made soon on this. Yeah. My, my, my okay, dog, what have you heard? Um, well, it was, but the kill, one of the killers, just um, the person who they said did it, he died in jail. McAdoo, 600. That was oh. a, yeah, that was a person who they said they know for sure he did it. Like, I don't know how they know for sure he did it, but they said they know for sure that McAdoo, 600. It was one of the people who did it. He died. So I don't know that that stumbled it or, but yeah. Okay. Uh, how old was he? McAdoo was like 20, probably about 24, 25. Okay. So what, he was killed in prison or he, he um, overdosed or? Yeah. Um, They said he overdosed, but his mom said that on DJU, his mom said that he fell out the bed and it's supposed to hit his head. That's what the police told him. He fled. I, I've been in the county a million times. I've been on the top bunk, Vlad. I've been on the bottom bunk. I ain't never rolled off that bed, man. It's like your body know that you only got a certain space on this little bed, man, before you tump off. So your body stays in it like it trains to stay in the middle, man. Like I ain't never heard of it. But, yeah, you know, might be karma. Might be all the, the you, you die from like a, a thousand ways to die. You might not die from... Nobody shooting. You might die tripping over a brick and, and, and busting your head, you know? That's how I look at it. Yeah, I mean, you've got bunk beds in most kids' rooms these days. I've never heard of someone falling off a bunk bed and dying. But, you know, when it comes to these prisons, they don't really want to investigate all that heavily. You know, they just make something up. Whether they kill you. Yep. Ruger brother got killed, and they probably told Ruger daddy now. 
uh, uh, straight light, he hung himself. That's what they say. I done seen somebody holler, mama, getting beat. They killed the inmate and, and the shiny. Mama, help. He was dead. Man, they know they they told the people that he was in the hospital and everything. Somebody had to call his family and tell his family, like, did y'all hear about y'all people getting killed three weeks ago? And they like, no, nah. you know, they killing people in jail, man. They killing people. Well, I've had MPG butter on my show a couple of times. Uh, your name got brought up. Hey, uh, I'm sure hey, you've hey, seen Vlad, it. Hey, man, I don't even like to talk about irrelevant, man. But but we can talk about him, man. Cause he all he always bring up my name. They tell him he can't come to his hood, so he say something about trenches news. You hear me? Like everything they do to him, he say something to me about it. So I right, it's cool. What what he say? What he lie about now? Um, I think that when I brought up that you and Duck were roommates, he said that wasn't true. If I remember correctly, yeah. Um, yeah, he. Hey, but he but, said he knew he knew who you were and everything. Butter wasn't even around though, Vlad. Like him and Lil J got him and Lil J got banned from the hood at one point in time, bro. They took some guns from some members out of town, so they got banned from the hood. So, like after 2011, two, I mean after 2000, like the end of 12, 13, 14, until Butter and them got locked up, they weren't hanging around Duck. So literally, it was like 10 years since Butter been really around Duck. It's been like 10 years with them going to jail and everything. Like, it's been like 10 years since we seen Butter. Like, Butter wasn't around. When I was going to video shoots, radio stations, with FBG Young, Butter wasn't there. Butter was on, Butter was on the run in the suburbs with Lil J. So, yeah, I, I stayed with Boss Chrissy, actually. He he a rapper that's, um, he a rapper, his FBG Creed, Boss Creed. And um, that's who we stayed with. He's still alive right now. He did an interview with Humble Soul, actually, and so said that, I lived with him, me, Duck, and we lived together. I stayed with them for like three, four years. Every house that they stayed in, me and Duck stayed with them. Well, you said that FBG Butter got Lil J's mother locked up for three years? Yeah. He got his mama locked up. This, 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 for real. Lil J said it too. Okay. What exactly did he do to get her locked up? Um, it was a picture. I don't know if you remember this. It was a picture that was floating around. And the picture had Butter sitting at the table in a police station with a fork and a spoon in his hand and looked like he was finna, um, with a napkin around his neck, looked like he was finna have a feast in a police station. That's where the Italian beef and Pepsi came from. Lil J said he was in the police room finna eat Italian beef and Pepsi. And, um, yeah, it was a picture that surfaced. And Lil J mama got it from the lawyer that once they got the evidence... Once they, um, what what is called, Vlad? Oh, my mind glitch. Um, what is called, babe? When, once you get your discovery. Once you get your discovery mm, yeah. and see who the witness is and all that, and they put it out there, that butter, the picture, and the state and all them, they came for tampering with a witness. Oh. Yeah, witness they came, tampering. Yeah, tampering with a witness. And butter went to, actually, butter was in Kankakee. He was in Kankakee and PC in Kankakee. In Kankakee County. He got transferred from the county. He was in PC with Lil J too. He was in PC with Lil J. When Lil J was up there, when Lil J was up there getting wild, all them videos you see, Butter was up there too. It, uh, it was a trans, it was a transgender that hopped on DJU and said, they was like, Do you know Butter? He was like, Yeah, I know Butter. Butter was up there with us. But Butter ain't never tell nobody that he was on Division 9 up there with Lil J. While Lil J was stepping in the name of love. With Big Red now. Okay, because there was this whole thing that came out where a transgender named Red Montana claims that he or she, however you want to you know, present it, had relations with Lil J. Since he was 13. J responded and said, people kill for clout, people die for clout. Now, there's always been stories about Lil J, I remember there was the video of a dude allegedly sitting on his lap and, and that type of thing. I mean, a lot of people that came and basically said that Lil J is, is gay or bisexual or whatever else. Do you think that J will ever actually just admit it? Do I think he'll admit it? Even though he on camera? Nah, he ain't gonna admit it. That ain't him. But, you know, 
every every everybody everybody do something. Maybe he thought he was gonna be in there for the rest of his life, you know, for the case, and he thought he was gonna be in there forever. So he was just getting. I don't know, but I can tell you this though, Vlad. I love Lil J. I'm still support him and all that. But you know, I just need him to know that I'm a reporter. I'm a blogger. So if it come across my screen, bro, like I got to report about it. I can't be biased and say, oh, man, this is my, this, I, I know his whole family. You know, I got to report about it. You was with Big Red on Division 9. I got to report about Big Red. You was trying to diss masculine. <laughs> hey, that was crazy, Vlad, man. You got to watch that video. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff was trying to demasculate me. I'll say, what the hell? I had to go and type it in. When you trying to take somebody man away from them, like, you know, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, it's crazy, bro. Like, but yeah, shout out to Lil J, man. If he come out, he'll be bigger than Lil Nas X. Okay. <laughs> shout out to Lil Nas X, you, man. Old Town Road. I love it, man. Well, you said that Lil J should be coming home soon and he's going to cop a two-year plea deal. Yeah, um, that's what he waiting on. He waiting to get his time down even so he could he could get right out. You know, he trying to he trying to even it out where he can cop out and then come right home. It's like a dress in, dress out. Once you got your time, dress in, dress out. Or they gonna hang him for the switch. I mean, he just got out for a, a murder, a ten murder on his homie. You know, the feds love that. They rub their hands together when you catch something else. Like Nook. I know they rub their hands together. Kidnapping, guns, all that, you know. Well, speaking of switches. Uh, Lil Zay Osama is locked up right now over the gun case. So, basically, what had happened was in September 2022, he was in an Uber, and after he left, he had left his gun in this car, allegedly. It was a Glock with a switch. Um, you know, the Uber driver called the police. The police picked him up, but the case was ultimately uh, dismissed. But then the prosecutors actually revived it after he was arrested last December in Chicago following a high-speed police chase, where they found a loaded Glock 29 with a laser, extended magazine, and another switch with a 50-round drum and a scratched-off serial number. So at the time that he got arrested, he was wearing a $90,000 necklace that was connected to an armed robbery in New York. He was also facing pending charges in Wisconsin for carrying a handgun with a scratched off serial number. So basically, he's locked up now, and they're not letting him out on bond. Yeah. Do you know uh, Zay Osama at all? Uh-huh. I, um, my first encounter with Liz Zay them was he had robbed the cameraman of ours. And um, we, went, we went over there, and we got the cameras back from him. He was a juvenile then. Liz Zay was like... He had to be probably about like 15, 16 at that time, probably about 15, and um, robbed our cameraman. So we had to go over there and get our cameras back. But yeah, um, let's say crying right now. He crying that ain't nobody helping him, that everybody left him. It's the same old story, man. Had the same energy when I get out. Like, it's the same old stories, man. Let's say had an opportunity, like Polo G. He had an opportunity. He was up there. He just, you know, being around your environment. You don't want to be no leader. The people with you ain't no leader. It's the blind leading the blind. It's bound to happen. And before that, Vlad, Lil Zay Osama got off before the New York switch. I don't know if you remember this one. They was on a high-speed chase. And the state troopers, um, they crashed into a downtown by a building. And they found like six guns in the trunk. AK-47. Um, all type of guns was in the trunk. This is when somebody had stole his jewelry. They stole his watch. And um, the guys from 4-6 or uh, Lafayette, somebody stole his watch when he was asleep. And they was on the internet saying like they took it. So he had a point to prove that he was finna go and slide. His homies and them took all them guns, like They took the rap for all those guns, like four, five guns. They took the rap. And let's say oh, something get called with a switch like three weeks later in um, New York in a cab. I mean, just having a switch in and of itself is a major problem. Just having it. Just just having it without doing anything wrong with it. A gun, a registered Glock in your house with a switch on it is catastrophic because it turns it into an automatic weapon. 
but to carry it around with you? With a 50-round drum? Wearing a necklace that's stolen? When you're a successful rapper? I mean, listen, you're not you're not a little Dirk, but... Well, I believe, like, he was actually part of little Dirk's crew. I think he became OTF. Yeah, I seen that. A lot of people be arguing with me, but... I seen that that little Dirk put an OTF chain around his neck, you know, yeah. and probably gave him some money because around that time, we all know Zay was broke. Like, at this point, he done been to police stations, bonded out, all type of stuff. He ain't got no money. Like, he ain't got no money. Lil Dirk hired the grab for him, you know? So, yeah, Lil, Lil Zay, man, he he one of the biggest crash outs, man. Like, one of the biggest. Him, Nook, like, they the biggest crash outs ever, man. Like, I, I don't understand it, bro. But trying to prove to a homie, that's the result you're going to get, kid. So make sure you pay attention. Well, you and uh, FEG Dutchie got into a fist fight? No, no, no. They they got it wrong, man. It was, it, it, it was a guy who was slow to interview me, man. And I guess I ain't do no interview with him. So he then went and got Dutchie and made up a story. I say, have me and Dutchie got cool. When I when I first started being around Dutchie and them, like going to the radio station and going to the studio with them, um, with they daddy, of course. I was with they daddy. Dutchie and them were my friends. I was with they daddy, mellow them daddy, cash them out daddy. You know what I'm saying? And um we went to Billy in that crib and I was in the front seat. And I went in the crib to um go and get Billy in there so we can go to the studio and I come out, Dutchie in the front seat. Now I'm grown as hell. Dutchie young, you know what I'm saying? These are your friends back there. It's a five people, six people back there in a the little minivan. So he got in the front seat. So I'm like, come on, man, come on. So Manny telling him, get out the front seat. Dutchie said something like, ain't no BDs finna ride in the front seat. You know? So when he said that, I flip. I'm what up? You know what I'm saying? And we, we, Doug got in between both of us. And that's how we got cool. You know what I'm saying? That's how we got real cool. We was about to fight and we got cool. Doug jumped. Dutchie ain't even remember it. It's been so old. But, yeah, we almost got into it over a front seat, man, some kid shit, you know. And, um, yeah, but I respect Dutchie, man. I, I, ain't nothing, I ain't never heard nobody try him or uh, none of that. I probably was the first one that tried to fight him probably, you know what I'm saying, that, that probably like, what's up? You know, but we became cool after that. Shout out to Dutchie, though. Well, you're in a situation with C-Day? Oh, yeah, C-Day. <laughs> hey, hey, Vlad, man. <laughs> He deserved to be where he at. I ain't gonna lie. Don't nobody help him. Don't nobody help him, y'all. I'm saying it on Vlad. No. Um, see, they, I, I walk, they watched me um, walk Duck back. They watched me walk Duck back to Rose. I was smoking with Duck. Duck came off the green line. And um, as I'm walking Duck back and I come back, now, I didn't already talk to L.A. Capone with C. Day. So, L.A. jumped in the car. I think he jumped in the car with J.B. Ben Laden. Shout out to J.B. Ben Laden, too. He jumped in the car, and they flew up King Drive. So C. Day stood by Oak Block or somewhere by Walgreens and watched me. Until I stood there, he watched me. And Duck came downstairs. He seen me get Duck the Blunt, walk off with Duck. And I came back on 63rd, and I stood between Rock Charles. If you ride through there or you go on Google Maps, you can see the gap still right there. Between the Beauty Supply and Rock Charles, it's a gap. And I was listening to Wiz Khalifa. I'll never forget it. When I get paid, my checks be looking like phone numbers. It's called phone numbers or something. And um, I was listening to it. Some told me to turn around. And I turned around, and see they was right there with his eyes twisted. Bow! You know, I took off. It was like the, it was like the, uh, on the track meet, Vlad. When the gun said, on your march, get set. Bow! I was gone. A hype man ended up getting hit. The Coca-Cola truck. And I and I took off, man. And and I and I called LA. I talked to LA like a couple of days after that. He was like, man, I just told this stupid motherfucker who you was. You know what I'm saying? LA then told him that I'm from his block where his mama and grandma and everybody from. I help I raised LA. See that didn't care. He didn't care. He seen me walking with Duck now. And instead of trying to hit Duck when he was with me, he tried to kill me, the problem, I guess. So you know, I got zero, I got zero love for him, man. I hope he do that whole 40. <laughs> Maybe he'll learn after 40 years, man, to talk up for the kids, man. Well, yeah, in 2016, he was sentenced to 38 years in prison. Yeah. 38 That's years. A lot of time. And, a lot of time. And his homie, we got through time about, we just got through time about this, though, Vlad. 
Um, Rondo. Ain't nobody saying nothing about Rondo like they saying Trenches News. But Rondo clearly threw him under the bus. <laughs> he said that uh, Cordy, Cordy Eli Ely was the sole shooter. Said he was a sole shooter. So that's the one whether your lawyer said it or you said it. Before you go into a courtroom, your lawyer going to ask you, Vlad, I'm pretty sure you got a lawyer. You sure you want to do this? Your lawyer going to, a paid lawyer going to ask you that. So, yeah, he threw him under the bus. See, they just exposed him, put out the paperwork um, from Cam Fox and them office that Rondo threw him under the bus and Lil Durk and them hard being them, man. They, they take off with certain rats and all that, you know. So, yeah, he, he exposed Rondo for telling on him. Yeah, I think we actually covered that story a while ago, and I think Rondo threatened to sue me or something like that. Dang. I mean, I don't know. That's crazy. I don't know. That's crazy, yeah. and it's public record. The the um, See, they put out the files. He put out the whole files, man. So, yeah, that's crazy. They'll try to sue you when <laughs> when they know they wrong, man. That's crazy. A gang member suing. Ain't that snitching? That ain't snitching, is it? You gotta go on. You gotta know, go on court and help. You gotta go on court and help further something, right? Yeah, man. Listen, uh, everyone threatens to sue who's never actually been through a lawsuit. That's a long, drawn out process. I, I've sued people before. It, it takes a while, it, and I've been sued before. It takes a while. It, it takes years, and it takes a lot of money. Or it takes a lawyer that'll take it on contingency, meaning they're donating their time for free for the back end money, so they. They have to know for sure they're going to win. So, so yeah, you could threaten to sue all day long. You can't pull up an app and sue somebody. It's a whole process. Well, uh, Bloodhound Lil Jeff got shot and killed. He got shot 12 times. And you actually talked about this. 19. Hmm. 19, man. Stood over. Hey, Vlad, man, like... Crackhead tendencies, man. Crackhead things get you crackhead results, man. They was running around Chicago. Even their parents knew it. I seen his parent, both his parents say, y'all didn't kill him. He came to kill y'all. So when they, I seen his parents bragging about it, I said, yeah, I see why he gone. You know, his parents was, was aware of what he was doing and approved of it. Right. Did you say that little Jeff's father said to clear the streets? Y'all be saying clear the streets. Say he, he won't be the only one. If you ain't if you ain't in the streets, stay out of them. He basically saying if you ain't got nothing to do with nothing, stay off 67. Clear the whole area, man. So with a warning like that, you ain't got no dude, no no choice but to respect what that man said. Stay out of there. Well, you actually DM'd him over that. Yeah. I I, I DM'd him because I was like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, dog, I know you gotta be 40 plus. You know, to sit here and say this, I know you hurt, but, you know, if I knew my son was out in the street killing people and doing that, first of all, we ain't having no horse and carriage front of the like, <laughs> We ain't doing none of that. We ain't finna spend 50000 on the nigga who ain't one joy in life while he was down here. So we gonna burn him. That's the first step. Burn him. That's the cheapest way. Ain't nobody gotta, uh, ain't nobody gotta um, be in debt or none of that. Burn him. It costs $5,000 to burn somebody, though. It costs, still costs, but, I mean, why put a person in horses and carriage and they down here killing people? Why put them in a wall, in a, in a what do you call it, call it a mausoleum or whatever you call it? Why put them in there? Why waste money when they was just down here and didn't appreciate life? Like, I don't understand it, man. You a ball out for somebody when they gone, but you went down here telling them what to do right when they was here. Like, that's crazy, man. Well, you said that Lil Jeff was trying to be like King Von. Yeah, he was. He even said it himself on DJU. Um, like Von said, it takes two bodies. You got to hire two bodies to be in my school. I wouldn't, hey, look, I'm going to tell the youth. I wouldn't want to be in Lil Jeff's school. Just go and look at the video of his, um, him dying. I wouldn't want to be in his killer school. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go to his school. Y'all need to get a refund back. Everybody who um signed up for his school, because... Man, his school didn't work out, man. He ran up on the wrong people, man. They was ready, Vlad. They stood over, man, 17 times to the chest. The autopsy came out. 17 times. You see how little he was, Vlad, to take 17 bullets? 19 bullets? Man, that had to be, like, painful. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a, an interview on uh, 
DJU's channel where Bloodhound Little Jeff is talking about how he has allegedly 10 bodies. That was the rumor. Yeah. Um, and you actually said that uh, you think that the, the killer will get off. Yeah. The killer doing interviews. The killer doing interviews. Really? Like, you might got to get him, Vlad. You might have to might have to run down on them one time, Vlad, and see. But you just got to make sure they going to talk, Vlad. Ain't no need to get, no, get on there and you ain't going to do no. You going to... I got to do my research and shit. Like, no, 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 this to little Reese, but, you know, I'm in the field that you in. I want my money's worth. You hear me? Well, you've actually said that Venezuelan immigrants are responsible for a lot of the crime that's happening in Chicago right now. Yeah, they are. They are, Vlad. How so? Um, They walking around with, they walking around with machetes. It's like they trying to take the, I don't know what they doing, man, but they robbing people. They shooting people on the red lines. They kidnapping people like, Ooh, they finding women in trash cans and, and, and garbage and garbage bins and shit. Like some things like you you aware of that wasn't happening before they got here. Like, and and due to the president, you know, um, the senior citizen, he a vegetable. I don't even know why he the president. But due to him trying to get a vote, trying to get in and beat Trump, he wasn't to do whatever to beat him. Now they getting these guys IDs, man. When illegals was able to get an ID. Like, y'all getting them state IDs? Who paying for this? Who paying for $9,000 for them to get a month? We ain't even getting $9,000 a month. The people who've been over here. Like, it's crazy, man. I can't wait till Trump get in. I can't wait. Kim Fox, count your days. Count your days, Kim Fox. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, since our last interview, they tried to kill Trump. Try to take my boy out. I was mad, bro. I was mad, but I was happy when he threw it in the air, man. I was happy. I said, my boy, you're alive. He done survived one. Now y'all can't hate on Trump. Y'all can't say he's racist. Hey, look, his own people try to take him out. His own skin color try to take him out, man. I told them, bro, like, the crimes that happen, it be on, it be on that race. Black on black, white on white, it ain't, it, that's how it is, bro. That's how it is in the world, man. But, yeah, man, I, I hated that. We had to see it. That we had to see him down there lose his life, but I think all them Secret Service and all them need to be fired, man. Ain't no way in the hell dude got on the roof like that and people was watching him on the roof. Like, I think they need to be fired, man. I mean, yeah, we just interviewed uh, Nicholas Serving. He was a ex-Army sniper. He's called the Grim Reaper. He killed uh, 20-something people, I think, you know, while in the field. And uh, he said that he thinks it's a conspiracy. He's like, that many people couldn't have gotten it wrong. Like, the fact that this guy was on the roof by himself, no one noticed. And then when people started noticing, no one did anything. You know, I mean, he actually called uh, Donald Trump like the 50 cent of presidents. You know, took a shot to the dome and survived. Like, Yeah, that was crazy, Vlad. I couldn't believe it, man, seeing it. I thought it was a fake because me and my wife, we was watching the TV of him doing a speech. And he was talking about LeBron James. I just walked out the room and they were saying, "Eh, forget LeBron James or... No LeBron James. No LeBron James. And then Trump says something. Then next thing you know, I hear, I see him twist. I'm like, what the hell going on? And then I see that they're going to attack him. Like, I never seen that in my lifetime, man. I never seen it. I seen it on videos of, like, presidents overseas, but not over here, man. I wasn't expecting that over here. Well, uh, you spoke about Batman Kevo's 15-year-old son who got killed. Uh, and I actually spoke to Kevo just the other day. We were talking about something else. And the first time, you know, we got on the phone, the first thing I said was, hey, man, my condolences about your son. Uh, I can't imagine what you went through and are probably still going through to lose a teenage son like that. Uh, but you actually know some of the situation behind that? Um, Yeah. They they said his son was um basically robbing people. Like his son was out there... Um, try to fit in. A, a, a couple of his son friends, they was older guys, but they hit me up like, you know, um, we've been taking care of him. We've been doing this. We've been doing that. But, in Cap Bama, see, when I talk to people, I want to hear the whole story. I don't want to, I don't want y'all to just inbox me and bash Van Man. So when they had told me the whole story, I said, it ain't Van Man's fault, man. 
If Bad Man tell his son, I want to move you up out of here. I was the son like Bad Man Kevos. When my daddy told me that he was finna move me and my brothers away from my mama, we told him, nah, bro, you can go down there with that lady yourself. We stand with my mama, you know, and that was our choice. So by me standing with my mama, Vlad, I wasn't able to live the life that my little sister them got. My daddy, my daddy them successful. I wasn't able to live that life. All I know is trauma and pain. My little sister and them don't know nothing about going through nothing, you know, because they have money. They seen the money. But, yeah, um, Bad Man Kevo, um, his son ain't want to go to him. His son in the street, man. Do he stop his life for his son? I'm pretty sure he tapped in with his son and tell, tried to give him the best advice, you know. Like, you can give people money all day. People be happy with that. But what that's going to change? He could send him a million dollars. What is going to change if his son don't do nothing with the million dollars or his baby mama? You know, people don't look at all that, bro. So I feel bad for Bad Man, bro. Like, I feel bad for him. People have kids and they in different states. And, you know, like, you got a baby mama who's trying to finesse. That's what I got out of it. That's what I got out of it, man. Like, I mean, it's sad. I mean, I've interviewed Kevo before. Uh, cool dude cool dude he hustles he figures out angles to try to make money he trolls you don't really know that he's always trolling sometimes and so forth but yeah man i mean to bury a kid a teenager oh, man, I, that's the type of pain i hope i never experience yeah me too man you supposed to your kids supposed to bury you man you ain't supposed to bury your kids yeah i buried my dad you know, I mean, it was sad, but but that's the way life works. You're supposed to bury your parents, not the other way around. Well, uh, famous Richard just got arrested on July fourth. Famous Richard. Famous Richard. What did he get arrested for, Vlad? Well, I guess he was staying out in Jersey. He got into an argument with two people at a quick check, and he pulled out a gun. He then fled the scene, and police came to his house where they found a gun with a scratched-off serial number, the large-capacity magazine. And he was charged with aggravated assault with a weapon, possession of a firearm for an unlawful purpose, unlawful possession of a handgun, and possessing a, defa a defaced firearm with other charges. Is now, he out uh, on bond? Uh, I think so. That's crazy. He been going through it, Vlad. He just lost his brother from 71st and Paxton. So, right, so Lil Josh is yeah, his brother? Yeah, Lil Josh. That's his real brother. Okay, what happened with that? Um, Josh ended up getting killed by a friend. His friend killed him. The guy who killed him ended up going to stand on the same block that he killed Lil Josh on and got killed the same way. Ain't that crazy, Vlad? Hmm. He got killed by a friend, and the friend ended up coming back. Like, uh, after the front row, I guess, and standing there. And they killed them too. So, yeah, they got some internal war going on over there. You ain't got to worry about your ops now. <laughs> the ops over with, ain't no more ops. Watch them friends. Watch you call friends. That's just my advice to everybody. Yeah, and I mean, the whole thing of getting into an argument with someone and pulling out a gun and then next thing you know the police are at your house and they recover the gun and so forth like I always tell people that even if you have a carry permit carrying a gun is usually a bad idea it's usually I understand that you want to feel like you're protecting yourself like, like I get that but there are a lot of situations where a gun is not is not necessary. There's very few situations where pulling out a gun is necessary. You know, like, for example, me, me and Tony Yeo got in this whole conversation about, like, you know, the, the tax stone, you know, uh, situation where uh, Troy Ave's bodyguard got killed. And it's like New York City backstage at a crowded nightclub. If he had a knife instead of a gun, and he just stabbed one of them dudes, and they lived, he might have gotten a year, a year and a half, gone back, you know, went back right back to his podcasting career. If he had just gotten into a fist fight, he was there with Casanova, okay, they may have won, they may have lost, but regardless of what happened, 
they'll go back to their life. You pull out a gun, that's all types of charges right hit right then and there. You shoot the gun, that's even more charges, and you kill the person, unless you're in Florida or or you know, one of these stand your ground type places, you're gonna have a lot of problems. So you know, this, this is the why guy, I say Is this the guy on Vlad that they called that they saying he a he a snitch? Like the other guy, the other guy, the other rapper, they saying that Troy, he snitched. Troy Ave, yeah, Tr- Troy Ave definitely snitched. She took the stand. He's in jail right now over the whole situation also. But he only got like a year or something. So, so my man got my man got like 25 years. Damn. I seen that. Yeah. I ain't know the situation. I'm like, is the family pressuring him to get on the stand? Because, you know, some people, they, they got gangster family. They'll be like, hey, bro, you got to go out there and make this shit right, you know? No, I mean the family of the of the guy who got killed actually hates Troy Ave because they felt that they used you know he used that dude as a crash dummy. He basically was like Troy Ave was one of these dudes, and I I personally know him, and I remember at one point he even like threatened me over text message because I wouldn't like post his music or something stupid. But like he's one of these dudes that like he he was grinding for a long time to try to get on. So when he did finally get on a little bit, when he started to get kind of like local famous, like New York famous, he basically was mad at all the people that didn't, didn't put him on. And he took it upon himself to like hold a grudge and, and go over the top. So like, for example, like I Love McConan, the, the gay rapper who used to be signed to OVO. Like Troy Ave freestyled over one of his beats and the dude was like, yeah, I don't like when dudes like freestyle over my beats. And he's like, oh, we're going to see you next time you come to New York. They came to New York. He was performing with, uh, you know, Ray Shremmerd. And Troy Ave's bodyguard, Banger, went and pulled the dude off the stage and, like, punched him in the face a bunch of times. Yeah, that's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was using this dude to take out all his little personal petty beefs, which weren't even that serious, to say, hey, I don't like people freestyling over my beat. Okay, it's your, it's your song. You're allowed to say that. You, you, you're going to put hands on this dude? And he was using this dude to do this type of shit over and over again until someone just wouldn't take it. Like Taxstone. Like, nah, you're not, you're not going to do me like this dude? Nah. Pulled out a gun and killed him. And, you know, now he's in jail for a very long time and someone's dead. And, you know, Troy Ave's in jail too. Like, like nobody won from this. Everybody lost. Got Everybody lost. Out. So, basically, he got tricked off the streets. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Sad, man. It's sad. Now, now, you said that you actually had to move because someone dropped your location? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, 2022. Was that 21? Yeah, 22. Um, I had a, I had a podcast, Three-Headed Monster podcast that I was doing. I was, you know, I was trying something new. I had 27K subscribers. And I came in the game knowing that I was bigger than what I am, you know, so I try to help these guys out, put these guys on a podcast um, with the three-headed monster, and um, it just went to hell. It just went to hell, Vlad, man, like, trying to help people out on YouTube, man, like, yeah, you'll lose yourself and lose everything you got, man. I learned the big lesson from that. Okay, so you actually had to move out of the home that you were living in and move somewhere else. Yup, I had to move. I had to move that same day. Soon when they put it out there, we had a we had a um, moving company come and and back, box up all our stuff and move. Yup, because of that, a person wow. just for letting somebody come to my house on their thing, and I, I let a person who I thought was like duck homie, and you know what I'm saying all that don't mean nothing no more. Cause he the only one could have dropped my load. He the only one been in our house, you know. So with that, with that being said, God didn't been blessing me though since then. God didn't bless me, um, Vlad. They said they talk about this money that the feds gave me, man. But I, I got enough money that I could I could pay the feds. You know what I'm saying? I could pay they um, you know I make enough money on YouTube and off my book and everything else I got going on that I could actually pay about ten agents every month to to just work for me. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand that, though. They think I got to sell money for them. No, I got more money than them. I make way more money than them a month. 
You know, even the highest cop in Chicago, I make more money than him a year. You know, so I I I, I be just like I be humble and and blessed. You know, when people do shit to me. Well, look, when I realized what my position is and how big my reach was, I decided that I'm either going to live in a gated community or in a high rise with a doorman. I set up a situation and, you know, in Calabasas, I got a house with a gate. You cannot pull up unless you have a driver's license and you have an invitation from somebody there. That's the only way. We're going out. That's the only way. Yeah, we're going for that one. So, you know, yeah, I mean, you could potentially jump over a gate and sneak into a house, but then you'll have to try to get away without a car. Right? You can't get into that. Or in New York, I have, you know, an apartment where there's a doorman, which you walk up. Once again, you have to have an invitation. You have to show your ID. And so forth. There's cameras everywhere and so forth. I realized I'm no longer in a space where I could have a house where someone could pull up to the actual house. You know, when you talk about like the whole Drake situation, I was bodyguard, got shot through a drive by. That to me was crazy because I assume he lived in a gated community, but I guess he doesn't. I mean, he has a gate in front of his house, but clearly someone pulled up and just shot up the front of his house. Was- that was crazy. I seen that too. <laughs> yeah. Like they doing drive bys on Drake. Ain't nobody safe. Right, in Toronto. You can't even legally have guns in Toronto. So it's like New York. No, it's worse. Like, like the whole country, you can't legally have guns. In New York, you could actually, I mean, I had legal guns in New York. Well, there was a rumor that you were in witness protection and got kicked out and spent all the money. Yeah, they, hey, Vlad, man, I, I, I'm far from witness protection, man. Like I told you, Vlad, since I came on YouTube, I've been making six figures every year, man, since I came on YouTube. You know, I I, I don't need no federal money. I don't need no witness protection or none of that, man. It's it just people who just make up stories and want to stretch out the story. You hear me? Like, that, that's that's all it is. I ain't never been no witness protection in jail or on, on this earth. Like, I still go through the city. I still stop at places. I still go and see my family, my whole family from the city. Like, who going to tell me I can't come to see my family? Like... You know, so I, I just I just be aware of things now. I just be aware of things more, but I still live my life, Vlad. No witness protection. Uh, have they ever offered witness protection? No, nope, they never did. I, I didn't I didn't need no witness protection because, like you said, Vlad, I go back to what you said the first interview, Vlad. I had nothing to do with none of this. You hear me? I'm not like what's the name. He had something to do with it. He he was making deals to get out of jail. I never got no deal to get out of jail, probation, or none of that. On that thing, I did this on wheel, so I don't need no witness protection. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you know, you seen the paperwork, so you know, you know the difference between me and them, the other people trying to get a deal. If it, if it was a real job, you would look at what I did, like one of them history people who come in and tell the history of things. If I was legit, they legitly paid me. You know how they do it in court, like bring somebody who can break down and. Like the Young Thug trial, they got somebody who breaking down lyrics and telling them the foundation of, you know, the, the history of the place. You know, that, that's how I look at it, man. I just gave the history. I ain't tell about no murders or none of that. But them guys deserve to go to jail. You know, they deserve to go to jail. They did the shit. They deserve to go. Anybody on Duck Side do some dumb shit like that, they decide to go too. It ain't no one-way streak with me. All of them need to go to jail. They all in the way. They down here killing people for no money, no reason, and then get on the internet and brag about it. You need to go to jail, bro. Like, for real, you need to go to jail. Well, you touched on the Young Thug case. Right now, the trial is on hold because the main judge got recused. They brought in a female black judge. She then recused herself because I guess one of her deputies had some sort of relationship with someone. So now they're bringing in a white female judge. This is the longest criminal case in Georgia history at 18 months. Ultimately, how do you think this thing will end? I think the Young Thug, I think if push kind of shove, push kind of shove, Young Thug probably do like five, 10 years. I mean, five years, 10 years, but he'll be out in like five. If he just go ahead and cop out to something. 
but you ain't just gonna get up out of there bad no bad enough with nothing. You know what I'm talking about? Like with nothing. And then these people already caught out before you. So you gotta take some. If I was young thug, I'll come to the table like I already did 18 months, two years up in here. Let me go ahead and do another three in. You know? They gave Lucci, they knew Lucci threw his homie out the car and everything, and he he got to come home, man. Shit, mm -hmm. I I'd be trying to come home if I was young thug. See he trying to be the king slime. He trying to be the Walk out the front door of the courthouse. That's what he trying to do. Show the kids that if you keep your mouth closed and all of that, you're going to walk out the front door. That don't be the case all the time. You will lose yourself and your life and your kids trying to please somebody else. So I, I'll cop out if I was him. If I get the opportunity to go back home, i just do the years. I mean, yeah, all the, the social media stuff that we've been talking about, other people do, Young Thug, all that is part of his case. Like, there's a, a verse about shooting mothers, and then, you know, Lucci's mom got shot at, and there's all this back and forth, and, you know, wiping your nose, and all these lyrics, and, and so forth. A lot of, you know, like, like what I found is you're going to have snitches, you're going to have witnesses, you're going to have surveillance. But usually people get found guilty over things they do themselves. 80% of the time, it's usually you admitting to it in a space that you think that no one's listening to, whether it's a, a, a burner phone or someone recording you without you knowing or you not knowing where cameras are or, you know, on, on a, you know, even in jail. Like people who have these little phones in jail, like they monitor all that. They find though they have packet sniffers and stuff like that, and they could tie it into your into your actual jail cell. So, you know, a lot. And then when you start presenting it to the jury, and this person is admitting themselves to the crime, it's hard to get over that one. Yeah, yeah. When and like in the duck trial, when the jury was looking, like they they thought they was embarrassing me by playing the video of. Me with the gun on DJU or me, like, me in a courthouse. They thought they was embarrassing, but it's really embarrassing that these, that, like, they doing, like, the shit that they are meant to on, on camera. The shit that they pulling up and saying, move up. Dude from 63rd couldn't get it back up. And hearing that duck is from 63rd and, you know what I'm talking about? Like, that, that's just crazy, bro. Like, that's crazy. When the jury hit and you see they face, they looking like, what we think is, yay, they looking like. These the people who are doing that shit on the news at night that we, you know, like the jury thing different, bro. Yeah, yeah, man. And uh, I just hope that everyone's watching this right now and isn't discounting what you and I are saying. Oh, like these dudes is just snitching and they're promoting snitching and this... You know, this, that, because let me tell you, after our interview, of course, there's going to be the comments, the comments are the comments. But the people that I actually know personally, especially people who are a little bit older, they called me up and said, yo, this Trenches News guy, he's the only voice of reason that I've heard out of Chicago in a long time. He's actually speaking logic. He's not going along with all this internet tough guy super gangster type stuff, he's actually speaking logically from a civilian's point of view. And that's the reason why I brought you back. Because I feel like too many people try to posture and pretend like there's something that they're not. And I feel that the whole time that we've done these two interviews, you've been honest from beginning to end. You know, so I appreciate you coming back in, man. Wish you all the best. Oh, yeah, Vlad. And I appreciate you, Vlad. And, you know, I'm living in my truth, Vlad. Like, I didn't. I ain't perfect. I didn't did shit in the streets, public record, the whole Bowls incident. You know what I'm saying? Lamping out, waiting on people. I didn't did it, but I'm here to tell the kids now. I didn't did it. I ain't get no money out of it. I went on a hit, the big one of the biggest hits in Chicago, and I was just like C thing, ain't get a dollar. When I called the dudes, never said, man, I hit up him. Ooh, oh man, we in Vegas. How you get in Vegas within ten minutes, man? What jet you jump on? That's when I knew that it wasn't no rules in the streets. People will use you and then go. 
You know what I'm saying? And now the feds got a camera of me on the on the on the hit. That's how I had to admit to it. Like, the feds had a camera with me on the hit. Watch me chase dude down. You hear me? So that's how they yeah, that's they they had the evidence already. So I had to just admit to it. But I just here to tell the youth, man, be yourself. Don't be no flunkies. Be yourself, man. Ain't nobody gonna have you in the end. Ain't nobody gonna send you in jail. Nothing. So don't even think about it, man. Shout out to the mod squad too. All my mods, man. Shout out to them. I love y'all. Y'all always be with me, Queen Lotus. All y'all, man. Made media. Shout out to all my mods, man. I thank you, Vlad, though. That's what it is, man. Wish y'all the best. Shout out your uh, YouTube channel before I let you go. Y'all, shout out um Trenches News, man. Hey, make sure y'all go and subscribe to my channel. Um, I appreciate Vlad for feeding me and my family, man. I'm real humble. Call me what you want, man, but... You know, unless unless you want to change, you can go that way. Call me a snitch if you don't want to change. But if you want to change, man, inbox me, man, with information, man, and I probably can handle it. All right, Vlad, man, I love you, man. Love you too, man. Until next time. Peace.